कार्डियक टेम्पोनेट यू हर्ड ऑफ द टर्म कार्डियक टेम्पोनेट यस मिस यारा में टेलस राउल व्हाट इज कार्डियक टेम्पोनेट एनी आइडिया कार्डियक टेम्पो हैव यू हर्ड ऑफ इट और नेवर हर्ड द टर्म ओके यू ड्रॉ दिस डायग्राम एंड यू विल रिमेंबर इट फॉर लॉन्ग टाइम ओके हियर इज योर राइट हार्ट and of course here is your left heart and here is your pericardial sac now actually if there is so much pericardial effusion if there is so much pericardial effusion there is too much fluid collection here this fluid is collected into pericardial sac if there is larger amount of fluid which accumulate into pericardium and it compresses the heart especially it compresses the atria and compresses the ventricle during the diastole you know during diastole ventricles should relax so that ventricles should fill during the diastole but if there is excessive amount of what is this excessive amount of pericardial fluid let's suppose this is a peric uh, this excessive amount of pericardial fluid here what will happen under these circumstances that you know heart is compressed especially the ventricles now do you think that major venous input can come to the heart and do you think major output from the heart can be maintained no because there is rapid accumulation of large amount of the fluid which compresses on the ventricle and atria during the diastole so diastolic filling of the both ventricles is compromised so what will be the result that in this person there will be progressively rising jvp okay we can modify this diagram according to that that now what really is there that there is too much fluid and which is compressing the both ventricles the so right ventricle and right atrium are compressed look here if right atrium and right ventricle are compressed do you think venous return can be maintained well no so there will be rising jvp jugular venous pressure will be going up the sign of this is rising jvp this is showing that filling in the right side of the heart is compromised with this do you think blood pressure will be maintained well blood pressure systemic blood pressure will be progressively falling so there will be rising jvp with the falling systemic blood pressure and if you apply a stethoscope here now you have extra fluid here you are now between the heart and between the chest wall there is excessive amount of fluid do you think uh, heart sound will be louder or they will be muffled they will be distant and muffled right so these three things will happen if someone develops rapid accumulation of fluid in the pericardial sac and that does not give enough time for the outer layer of pericardium to stretch out then fluid compresses on the ventricles and atria and diastolic filling of the right ventricle and left right side of the heart and left side of the heart is reduced so what will be the feature this patient will have rising jvp jugular venous pressure falling 
systemic yes blood pressure and distant heart sound distant heart sounds or we simply call it muffled heart sound and this situation is produced by the such pericardial effusion which is compromising the function of right and left ventricle right and this type of situation is called yes back triangle back triangle and clinically we call that patient is suffering with cardiac tamponade person is suffering with yes cardiac tamponade tamponade now what you have to remember as good doctor that just having the pericardial effusion does not produce tamponade just having an excessive fluid here does not produce tamponade excessive fluid should be so much that it should compromise the functions of the both sides of the heart so that on right side jvp start rising compromisation of the left side lead to falling systemic blood pressure and because there's a lot of fluid around the heart you when you apply the stethoscope heart sounds are what heart sounds are distant another interesting thing which i would love to tell you at this stage that whenever there is pericardial effusion significant pericardial effusion uh do you think heart will remain at its fixed position or it will be fluctuating a little bit when there's a lot of fluid around the heart it will be in a fixed position as it is normally or it will be little bit fluctuating in in its position it will be fluctuating right because when there is excessive pericardial fluid heart is not at stable in its position and it fluctuate a little bit so the electrical activity of the heart if you put an electrode here if you put an electrode here and there is a major ventricular depolarization sometimes it will move towards it sometimes move little away so due to that reason qrs complex will be changing its morphology for example in this patient qrs complex is like this then qrs complex becomes small then qrs complex become again amplified right and then qrs complex again become small this is called electrical alternance that voltage of the qrs complex is fluctuating we call it electrical electrical alternance it is not pulses alternance that is a different thing that's that pulses alternate is a strong and weak pulse alternating with each other we develops in congestive cardiac failure sometimes this is not pulses alternance it is electrical alternance because electrical axes of the heart are alternating beat to beat and because electrical you can say axes of the heart are alternating altering beat to beat so qrs to qrs voltages are fluctuating or alternating with stronger voltage with weak voltage at vector move towards the electrode so voltage will be strong when vector move away from the electrode voltage will be weak so we call this condition electrical alternance is it clear now another thing which is very important sometimes they ask a question how much fluid is fluid is going to produce tamponade actually depends on amount of fluid as well as the velocity with which fluid is accumulated if fluid even a small amount of fluid rapidly accumulate pericardium does not have time to stretch so it will produce tamponade even if small amount of fluid rapidly accumulate is that right because pericardium doesn't have enough time to stretch out so it may produce tamponade for example just 200 to 300 ml of the hemopericardium is enough to produce tamponade but if fluid is accumulating very gradually extremely gradually fluid is accumulating then pericardium will keep on stretching with time and if pericardium will, will keep on stretching with time then what will happen if pericardium keep on stretching that even though a lot of fluid is there but without putting enough pressure on the cardiac chambers and without producing the 
rising JVP or falling blood pressure or distant heart sound. Distant heart sound may be there, but not the rising JVP and falling blood pressure. Am I clear? So this condition uh, will be called pericardial effusion, but without tamponade. So what I really want to put in your mind is that if someone asks you how much fluid is enough to produce a cardiac tamponade, you must ask that is it rapidly accumulating fluid or gradually accumulating fluid? If there is rapidly accumulating fluid, it does not give time for pericardium to stretch. So only 200 to 300 ml fluid is enough to produce cardiac tamponade. But if fluid is accumulating over years, even large amount of fluid is sometimes accumulated in the pericardium and if pericardium is stretched enough, if pericardium is stretched enough, then patient may not, may not have significant rise in JVP, significant fall in systemic blood pressure. This is that right? And we don't say that patient is having what? Patient is having cardiac tamponade. Patient is not having cardiac tamponade. Right? 